Nostalgia is a funny thing. At a time when remasters and remakes are all the rage, seeing old favorites come alive in new ways can be comforting. But sometimes nostalgia makes things from the past seem better than they actually are. Sadly, the latter is the case with Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, an enhanced remaster that compiles over 300 levels from previous Super Monkey Ball games to celebrate the series' 20th anniversary. As it turns out, Monkey Ballin' just isn't as much fun as it used to be. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania involves rolling your way through hundreds of stages with increasingly difficult obstacles. Early stages might be as simple as rolling from one end of a path to the other, collecting bananas along the way. Later on, you'll find your monkey pals being hurtled through the air, teetering along paper-thin bridges, navigating moving platforms, and so on. The GameCube-era graphics have gotten an overhaul, so its cartoony art style is more vibrant than ever. Because it's a mashup of several Super Monkey Ball games, there appears to be an almost overwhelming amount of content at first. There's the story mode originally seen in Super Monkey Ball 2, which is less a cohesive campaign than it is about 100 levels spread across 10 worlds loosely stitched together with brief, dialogue-free animated cutscenes. Challenge modes from the first two Super Monkey Ball console games appear as well, although the separate modes have some startlingly similar courses. Challenge mode doesn't feel significantly different from story mode gameplay-wise, but the twist is that you can't pick up where you left off. You have to get through all of the challenge stages in a single sitting. The problem with the story and challenge modes is that after 30 or 40 levels, they both begin to feel like a slog. The difficulty in story mode really ramps up around the halfway point, going from a light and breezy challenge to a frustrating exercise in failure very quickly. And while the environments and backgrounds might be fun and colorful, much of the playable level design is repetitive and uninspired. The further you get, the more it can feel like a chore. After finishing a tricky level, there's no satisfying adrenaline rush that accompanies overcoming a challenge, just a sense of relief that it's finally over. Completing levels is how you earn points, which can be used to unlock new characters, outfits, and gameplay modes. Joining the initial six-character roster of I, I, and his monkey menagerie are familiar faces from other Sega games, like Sonic the Hedgehog and Jet Set Radio's Beat. Playing as one of these characters even changes the bananas on each level to items from their respective games, which is a thoughtful touch. The Super Monkey Ball franchise has always been at its best as a party game, and that continues to be the case with Banana Mania. Party Mode has a dozen minigames, and most of them have surprising depth. For example, the Mario Kart-esque Monkey Race game has 12 different tracks and multiple game modes. Another point in Party Mode's favor is Same System Multiplayer, a rarity in a time when everything is online. Gathering a few friends for a night of monkey nonsense is far more enjoyable than playing the straightforward story mode on your own. With over 300 stages and a dozen party games, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania has plenty to do, but not all of it is fun. Its levels quickly become repetitive and frustrating, and the bright, cheerful environments and silly characters aren't enough to combat the tedium. When you consider the various gameplay modes, difficulty levels, ranking challenges, and unlockables, it could take dozens of hours before you see everything, though you're likely to run out of momentum long before that point. It's much more enjoyable as a multiplayer party game, so stick to party mode, or skip it entirely. For more, check out our reviews of I Am Fish and Toem, and for everything else, stick with IGN.